I'm gonna teach you how to gift the perfect wine for your perfect person. The holidays are here and the pressure is on. There's so much pressure to get the perfect thing for your spouse, your husband, your wife, your clients, the people you love, the people you hate. And wine's the perfect gift because it makes you look classy, honestly. So you know you should probably give a bottle of wine, but the big question mark is what should you give someone? And there's really a short answer and a long answer to this. So the short answer is that the two choices where you really cannot go wrong are red wines and sparkling wines. People sort of expect it from a societal standpoint. People sort of expect a bottle of bubbly for the new year or a nice bottle of red wine for Christmas, Hanukkah, or around the holiday season. And it really doesn't matter where the bubbles are from or red, where the red wine is from. It's just a really safe option. So just find something that's within your price point. I just wanna put that out in the first minute of this video if this is what you're looking for. So if you like that, hit like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Okay, good, you're still here, awesome. So I wanna give you the longer answer, more of like the critical thinking answer. This is more of what I think of when I have to gift a wine. And there's a lot of pressure for a professional as well. But you know, let's, let's rev up all three of my brain cells to figure out what would be the best gift for this person. I think when you're thinking about a gift for someone, you really have to think about that person. You have to think about what makes someone a good gift giver. And someone who is a really good gift giver is my wife, Corinne. She is awesome because she does this thing where she'll pick up on something I said six months ago, being like, wow, like I really wish I had a different ladle for the kitchen, you know? It's just some offhand comments or something that I didn't really think was that important, but I just said out loud into the stratosphere. And then she remembered it and then gave it to me as a gift. That's a good gift giver, someone who notices those tiny details, someone who really pays attention, because that's what a good gift is. It's thoughtful and it really keeps the person in mind. So you're gonna wanna ask yourself the same things with the person you're trying to give the gift to. And we have to bridge that with also the connection of what wine to pick. So the first question I really think of when I'm thinking of a wine to gift to this person is that would they like something classic or something adventurous? And just to quickly define what these are, classic wines typify a region. So what does that mean? That means that they are the perfect examples for that area. So you think of Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa Valley, well known, this is a classic wine. Pinot Noir from Burgundy in France, another classic wine. Sauvignon Blanc from Sancerre, also in France. You kind of get what I'm going at? It's this consistent of style of wine within a region, tastes the same every year, and professionals use that as sort of the baseline to compare all other wines to. It's really easy to talk about other wines when we all understand these sort of baseline classic wines. And if you didn't know what a classic wine was, be sure to subscribe. And these classic wines, at minimum, just show that it's a nice gesture, right? And most of these classic wines will make most people happy. It's a safe bet. Adventurous wines stray away from the classic. It's more of these off the beaten path, either wine regions, wine grapes. You might be looking to regions like Ontario, Canada, or even like the Becca Valley in Lebanon for these sorts of wines. These adventurous wines have a higher risk reward, but the payoff is really good if you nail it. So again, knowing the recipient will help you understand if they would like more of a classic or adventurous wine. So if your coworker made an offhand comment about making a trip to Croatia and they like trying the hot new restaurant every week, then maybe they'll wanna go for a more adventurous wine. Maybe something from Croatia even. Or is your client someone who eats at Texas Roadhouse? And there's nothing wrong with Texas Roadhouse, but you'd have to assume that this person might have a vague interest in wine, but would understand that you giving them a nice bottle would be a nice gift to receive. Something a little more classic, something a little safer. And for the people who like classic wines, realistically, a lot of people view wine as just a beverage to have with dinner, and that's okay. Them knowing that you just picked a nice classic wine is enough for most people. The core of it is that if you really know this person and pay attention to these small details, you're gonna have a better time nailing down what kind of wines they're gonna like. I also wanna have a special consideration for my Jewish slick squad out there and looking for kosher wines as well. You can tell a wine is kosher if it has the emblem of the circle with the U in it or it says Mevishal on it. 
Kosher wine kind of got a bad rep for a long time because part of the winemaking process of making it kosher is boiling it before putting it in the bottle. Boiling a wine severely changed how the wine tasted and yeah, it kind of gave a bad rep to the, all these kosher wines. So boiling this wine before bottling really altered the taste and definitely not in a good way. But now most kosher wines are flash pasteurized, which is a big thumbs up from the certification for all those kosher folks out there. And it really doesn't alter the taste. Once you have an idea of the recipients and what they're into, the best case scenario would be going to a local wine shop and purchasing the wine. You can go to a grocery store or a big box store, but for something like this, I really do not recommend it. Because yes, I'm giving you some skills to decide what kind of grapes and what kind of region maybe you should pick from, but the really way to nail this is to talk to someone in person. Having that extra personal one-on-one -on -one conversation really ensures that you're gonna nail this wine. And for the holiday season, like if you go into a wine shop, people love this. This is why people work in wine shops is to talk to people like yourself. People who have either no knowledge or a very baseline knowledge of wine and what they're into and kind of what idea they have. People who work in wine shops live for that. So please talk to them. <laughs> and if they're not nice to you, just go somewhere else. <laughs> So go into these wine shops and say, hey, uh, I wanna get something nice for my dad. He likes Napa Cabernets, but I wanna try to maybe do something a little more adventurous for him. What would you recommend? And in my opinion, if you don't live in a place where there is a small wine shop where you can talk about these wines with a person, I think the next best scenario would be going to a wine website. And not all of these websites are created equal. <laughs> Some of these online wine shops are run by serious professionals who do a really great job at curating sort of the perfect selection. So they will have a lot of classic wines, but they'll also have a lot of adventurous wines at a lot of different price points. My recommendations for online wine stores are Kogod Wines, Medium Plus, and Misa Natural Wines. And these places usually ship to most states in the US, but be sure to check first. And I gave an example earlier of saying, hey, my dad likes something classic, but maybe he wants something adventurous, right? Like maybe you kind of want to see and go this adventurous route, but don't really know kind of comparisons to make to get there. So I'll help you with that too. This is sort of like the meat and potatoes, too long, didn't watch portion of it. <laughs> So if you're a fan of these classic wines, these Pinot Noirs from either France or California, the more adventurous route I would go is Blaufrankisch from Austria. They're both light-bodied red wines with a good amount of fruit on there and nice complexity. I find that people who like these Pinot Noirs definitely like Blaufrankisch. Also, let's say that your person likes a nice buttery Chardonnay from California. What makes it buttery is this oaked component. So let's think about maybe oaked wines from more adventurous places. So maybe even just a Chardonnay Chardonnay from Australia would fit the bill. Or you can even go to other countries like Chile and Argentina, which also make Chardonnay with that oaky, buttery style. The big takeaway is really knowing this person and having a little bit of wine knowledge or not being afraid to go to a wine shop and asking these questions. So I hope this video helps you find the perfect wine for your perfect person.